Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. You know, I think it's time we rethink the battery swap technology for use in recharging or refueling electric vehicles on long routes. The reason I say that is I know that Tesla at one point in time had experimented with it. I believe it was at the Lost Hills supercharger where they had a small facility where they were testing out battery swap technology uh, and i don't know exactly why they ended up uh, not pursuing it but i think there could be a number of reasons if you don't have a whole lot of customers using it there's no real incentive to pursue it if you look the way that most automakers right now design the battery packs for their vehicles there's really not a clean effective way of doing a battery swap because it's one huge large module that's typically you know in the case of thermally managed batteries uh, liquid cooling loops and other ways in which it's integrated into the rest of the system and that doesn't make something easily swappable right so there's not a huge amount of value and with charging times dropping, at least for fairly efficient passenger vehicles, the need for it seems to become less and less. However, we're starting to see larger, less efficient vehicles being made into you know, EVs. And this also goes for commercial grade vehicles as well. Or as I was talking about in a recent video, Mark Rust, a GM president, was uh, referring to how difficult it would be to make heavy-duty trucks electric. And I, I agree with those things, but that's where something like a battery swap technology would pay huge dividends. And one of the things that prompted me to sort of rethink this or think it, it's maybe something we should start to consider a little bit more is a... Uh, a recent episode of the always entertaining rich rebuilds he was at ev west it's a shop that uh you know they focus on converting old gasoline powered vehicles over into electric and one of the uh, battery modules that they were using you know it outputs about 400 kilowatts i believe is what they were saying it's a small battery only maybe 32 kilowatt hours if i'm re recalling correctly uh, you know, and it weighed just three, four hundred pounds. You can start designing smaller module packs that contain enough energy and can output enough power that these individual modules can be loaded into essentially a bay on the electric vehicle. And those modules, if they're designed properly, they can be hot swappable, right? So they don't necessarily need to be integrated into the thermal management of the vehicle that can be handled by the outer casing, the housing within the vehicle that actually holds the battery module. So there's a lot of uh, technical issues that would need to be addressed and overcome, but a bottom loading battery module where you can stack multiple modules into a bay, uh, I think would be a very effective way of doing this. Of course, the other issue is either you do what Tesla does and isolate yourself from the rest of the industry with your own individual standard that nobody else uses, uh, or there needs to be some sort of an industry standard for these swappable batteries. But essentially what would happen is you would roll up to one of these swapping facilities, typically along high-speed interstate corridors or inner city corridors, and uh, you drive over a bay where a robotic or automated arm can reach up and pull these probably 200, 250 pound battery modules out that are maybe 20 kilowatt hours each and just swap them out. And in the matter of five to 10 minutes, you have the full range of your vehicle and you have basically new fully charged batteries. And this has a lot of advantages beyond just the refueling time because that might be what people focus on. But when you think about it, if these facilities are primarily powered by renewable energy, they're grid tied, all of these batteries that are in racks being stored underground and waiting to be swapped out into another vehicle that drives by, 
Well, they're storing renewable energy. They can be used as grid-tie storage in addition to serving the needs of electric vehicle owners. The batteries themselves are going to be longer lasting because they're, they're going to be less stressed from the slower charging rates and being stored for extended periods of time in basically a climate controlled area. There's a lot of advantages to battery longevity. Uh, the other thing that this can do is if we're looking at say 20 kilowatt hour module sizes, which I think would be ideal, it allows for some really interesting budget electric vehicles to be offered where perhaps they're sold on the lot with a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack. So for those of you who, you know, pay attention to this sort of thing, that's only maybe 80 to 100 miles of range. But if these vehicles are sold with the ability to upgrade and expand battery packs, perhaps even renting them for long trips, well, now what you have is a vehicle that originally from factory was a 20 kilowatt hour battery vehicle with say 100 miles of range. Now you can add two or three of these 20 kilowatt hour modules. And instead of a 100 mile vehicle, you now have a three or a 400 mile vehicle. And again, on your trip, you can swap it. And because these are electric vehicles, there's absolutely no reason why they can't also be outfitted with a CCS port uh, and be able to charge at home like normal. So essentially what you have is a vehicle that at worst in current times is as good as any other electric vehicle that's being sold. But as the infrastructure for battery swaps is built out, it then gains from that and can use the infrastructure as it's rolled out to now be able to travel in similar times with similar refueling times as gasoline powered cars. Because again, even if you're looking at these high powered charge stations, most of the time they don't give you that subsequent charge range that I've talked about before. So you're, you're down 20, 30, 40, 50% off of what your actual 100% range would be. Well, with battery swap, you don't have that problem anymore. I think it's a really good option that the industry should sort of explore a little bit because again, it's up to the individuals. You might hardly ever use that service, but at the time that you do, well, then it's nice to know that you can pull in and like I said, five minutes later, you, you've had a chance to go in and use the bathroom, maybe grab a snack from the lobby, you know, check your phone, do whatever it is you would normally do at, at any sort of a travel stop. And the five to 10 minutes later, when you're ready to leave, it's on your schedule, you're pulling out with 100% of your range. And it really doesn't matter whether you're adding 40 kilowatt hours of battery range or 240 kilowatt hours of battery range. The amount of time that you take to swap out these batteries is going to be pretty close to the same. It'd be five minutes or less. So there are many, many advantages I, I see from this. And like I said, that combining that with the grid tie capability, uh, the, the longer lasting batteries. And then of course, people like to refer to future proofing as energy density of cells improves. There's a possibility that maybe you bought a 60 kilowatt hour battery vehicle today in five years, if you feel like it, you can start swapping out modules that increase your capacity to 80 kilowatt hours or 100 kilowatt hours. And these are all sort of prices that are built into those upgrades. And, you know, you can just enjoy your vehicle for even longer because now, even though you bought a 200 mile electric vehicle, you have a 400 mile electric vehicle and all the while you could refill in five minutes anyway. So it was really never that big of an issue. So I'd love to hear what you think. You think this is maybe a model that we should revisit self-contained battery modules that can be hot swappable, uh, maybe 200 to 300 pounds at this point in time with current energy densities uh, for maybe a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack that would be capable of running your entire car. Is, is this something that you would be interested in? Is it something that you think that the automakers really need to pursue? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And thank you for watching.